So in today's video, we're going to talk about the secret reason behind why pros like Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, and Roger Federer all add weight to the handle of their tennis rackets. So if you do any research online about adding weight or customizing your tennis racket, you'll find that people are recommending to add weight in the handle of the racket. There are two common reasons cited. Both of these ideas have decent logic behind them, but neither of them are the real reason pros are adding weight to the handle. The first is for balance. So if you add some weight to the head, either at 3 to 9 or 12 o'clock, like many people do, Seasoned veterans recommend that you add weight to the handle to balance out the weight you've added to the head. Well, yes, it is definitely desirable to balance out any weight you've added in the head with weight in the handle. It's not just for balance. There's more to it than just that. Other people suggest that you should add weight to the handle to increase the maneuverability of the frame. That's not something that I've explicitly experienced on court. I know a lot of people feel like that helps them get the tip around faster, but from a physical perspective, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. For example, if you had a hammer and you add weight to the bottom of the hammer, I don't really think that's going to increase your hammering speed, but some people feel like it increases their racket head speed. There are some other ideas behind increasing the speed by adding weight in the handle through what's called MGRI tuning, but let's leave that for another day. The real reason that pros are adding weight into the handle is to increase the recoil weight. So what even is recoil weight? Well, it's related to swing weight, but it also factors in the balance point. So as we know, swing weight is a moment of inertia around the four inch mark. If you measure your swing weight with a Bablet RDC, that's where it kind of grabs onto the handle and swings the racket back and forth. The reason we use that four inch mark as the axis of which we rotate the racket is it's meant to simulate your hand pretty intuitive, right? But there's another key axis on the racket that we have to think about when we look at how rackets behave on impact, and that is the balance point. When you add weight to the handle of the frame, you are lowering the balance point, but you are also increasing the moment of inertia around the balance point. But let's dig in a little bit to what that inertia is. I'm not an engineer. I actually failed engineering school in my first semester. So if you have a better explanation of inertia, please comment it down below and I'll pin that best explanation of inertia if there's one that seems good. So when an object is in motion, it carries an inertia. So the greater the inertia an object carries, the harder it is to upset its motion. So an object that we would think has relatively high inertia would be like a semi-truck. Very heavy, it's going down the highway at 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. That thing is going to be really hard to stop for a regular person, right? If you stand in front of it, you're going to die. An object that might have less inertia is a tennis ball flying through the air. Yeah, it might hurt a little bit when it hits you going 60 miles an hour, but you're going to be alive and it's really unlikely you're even going to have to go to the hospital. Every time you hit the ball, essentially it's a collision. The ball has some inertia coming and the racket has some inertia coming. On contact, there's a lot of force at play and the racket can twist and move in a lot of different ways depending on how it's impacted with the ball and the properties of the tennis racket. So you've got the tennis ball hitting up here and then you're holding the racket down here. So it's kind of putting, making this kind of force, right? So if you have some weight down at the handle, that's going to help counterbalance whatever force is going on towards the tip of the frame. The greater the inertia around the balance point of your racket, the less that impact is going to upset the actual racket during the swing. This can lead to two big advantages. The first is a greater sensation of stability. So the less upset the racket is during the swing is going to lead to greater sensations of stability, right? When we feel a racket is twisting in our hand or is moving a lot on contact, that leads to a very unstable feeling. 
but if the rocket feels really solid through impact, it feels very stable. The second thing is an increase in comfort, and this is huge, especially for pros who are playing hours and hours a day. Every day they need the racket to absorb some impact shock from that tennis ball, or else you're leading to wrist fatigue, maybe you need to get surgery, take time off from the tour, right? That's not good for pros, and that's not good for you at home or me here. So the less the racket is upset by the collision of the ball, the less vibrations you're going to experience traveling through your arm and into your wrist and into your hand. Vibrations caused by the impact, right, your racket wiggling around, keep experiencing them and they're significant enough, that leads to pain and injury. Is this something that you can take to the court and add to your game? Absolutely. If you feel like your racket maybe could use some more comfort and use a little bit more stability, but you don't want to sacrifice maneuverability by adding weight higher up in the frame. Try adding some weight in the handle. Probably not going to give you a lot more power, and it really is unlikely to give you a lot more maneuverability, but it should help a little bit with stability, and it should help a little bit with comfort. The shots that I find high recoil weights especially helpful for are rackets that are more static, like the volley or the service return, or just blocking shots. But if you want to know more about the physics of a tennis racket, leave a comment down below. I do want to talk more about MGRI in the future, but it's a big, complicated topic, and it's going to take me a while to research it. I want to make sure I get the facts right. Bye.